This is the Radio One News update for November 19th. I'm Lady Merriam. In local news, the owner of a tourist boat that sunk in Kampot on Monday, killing four, was charged with intentional, with unintentional murder. Police are continuing to search for the man who was operating the boat at the time of the accident. Tour boat operations in the province remain temporarily suspended. The boat designed to carry 50 to 60 passengers was packed with 70 to 80 local tourists, police said earlier this week. The owner was not operating the boat at the time of the crash, but was in charge of the family-run business. Environment Ministry spokesman Sao Sopip said that residents of Domslang village in Chiba Ampo are not allowed to continue disposing of their trash into the Tonle Sap River, with his ministry asking city hall officials to end the practice. D. Kaden, the head of environmental the head of Environment Ministry's Solid Waste Management Department said that he had contacted the municipality's Waste Management Office and Department of Environment and had ordered them to take the lead in stopping the practice. Don Penn District Governor Kuch Samran, Samron said about 50 people, he led about 50 people to clean up garbage along the river starting at Chactamuck Hall. They rented two boats and cleaned garbage at the riverbank. An official at Sintry for Chabar Ampo acknowledged the company's garbage collectors sometimes do not do their rounds in Domslang because the roads are not accessible, saying they will discuss with their superior on how to deal with it. A Takao village's pigs have been hit with an outbreak of a disease described by the agriculture ministry as more economically damaging to Cambodian pig farmers than hoof and mouth disease. The outbreak of porcine reproductive and respiratory Sy syndrome, PRRS, in Tramkak district has so far infected 36 pigs, 13 of which have died. The report estimates 104 animals remain at risk of infection from the outbreak, which it says began on October 20th and was confirmed in a laboratory test last week. PRRS has a significant economic impact as a disease as it reduces repro reproductivity and reduces the number of piglets. Kao Sima Protected Forest, often pointed to as a role model for conservation projects across Cambodia, was granted much sought after REDD plus status by the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change in 2015 in response to conservation strategies put in place by the government in collaboration with NGOs. But a recent study found that despite the protections, locals were likely to continue their forest clearing unabated. However, the study clashes with research by geographer Tim Frewer, whose work focuses on Cambodia. He said, quote, the problem is that Red Plus has proved itself unable to deliver any substantial livelihood gains. Marcus Hartke, who, was, who has worked on conservation issues in Cambodia for over a decade, including in Khao Sima, said the residents' answers did not come as a surprise to him, adding that there are no economic answers to conservation problems without meaningful enforcement of the laws on the books. In a recent reminiscent, in a recent, in a scene recent, in a scene reminiscent of Mark Bibby Jackson, <laughs> here we go. In a scene reminiscent of Mark Bibby Jackson's latest novel, Peppered Justice, more than 20 police officers were deployed at specific locations in Kampot province to search for four men who had escaped after shooting a farmer during an, un during an unsuccessful robbery. Four armed robbers had barged into the home of 42-year-old farmer and demanded that he and his family members hand over their money and possessions uh, at gunpoint. When the farmer tried to escape to seek help from his neighbors, he was shot in his right ankle. 
The police claim to have clues as to the robbers' identities and hideout, but say it's not convenient to reveal additional information at this time, other than the armed robbers belong to the same village as the victims, adding the authorities are laying in wait for the suspects. In regional news, Jap Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe met for 90 minutes with President-elect Donald Trump to sound him out after a campaign that alarmed many U.S. allies. He emerged from the meeting saying, quote, As an outcome of today's discussions, I am convinced Mr. Trump is a leader in whom I can have great confidence. Japan is one of Washington's closest allies, but Trump alarmed Tokyo policymakers during the campaign by musing about pulling the thousands of troops, U.S. troops from the region and suggesting that officially pacifist Japan may need nuclear weapons. Trump also vowed on the campaign trail to tear up the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a proposed vast trade pact backed by outgoing Democratic President Barack Obama, and which Abe had made a top priority. China is looking to position itself as free trade's new champion at an Asia-Pacific summit, with the communist government seeking to project economic leadership as a U.S.-led Pacific Rim trade pact languishes under President-elect Donald Trump. China's effort to push trade pacts coincide with other soft power initiatives aimed at cementing the country's economic influence, such as Xi's Global One Belt, one Road Infrastructure Plan, and the Beijing-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. In international news, President-elect Donald Trump has pledged $1 trillion in infrastructure spending program to help jumpstart an economy that he said during the campaign was in terrible shape. But Federal Reserve Board Chair Janet Yellen warned lawmakers that as they consider such spending, they should keep an eye on the national debt. <clears throat> and that while the economy needed a big boost with fiscal stimulus after the financial crisis, that's not the case now. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon received the Legion of Honor from French President Francois Hollande for his contributions to tackling climate change. The South Korean diplomat helped push through the 2015 Paris Agreement, a deal aimed at moving away from fossil fuels to cleaner energies that was signed by almost 200 countries after nearly two decades of negotiations. In business news, state-owned Phnom Penh Autonomous Port reported a slight uptick in revenue, growing from $11.3 million to $12.3 million during the first nine months of 2016, compared to the same period last year in a filing to the Cambodia Securities Exchange. The Phnom Penh Autonomous Port's share price increased by 60 real on November 17th, ending the day at 5,360 real, or $1.32 in low volume trading. It has been nearly a year since the government signed a memorandum of understanding with South Korea that aimed to put Cambodian mangoes on the shelves of supermarkets in Seoul, yet local producers say there is little sign of any movement. The Kampong Spew Mango Association said the potentially lucrative trade agreement signed last December has stalled on South Korea's stringent sanitary and phytosanitary regulations, which local producers are unable to comply with. Cambodia's top-tiered Kao Romit mangoes currently fetch between 1,000 and 2,000 riel per kilo here, but could sell for considerably more if shipped to South Korea. Yet it could be several years before Cambodia has a processing plant that can treat the mangoes with heated water, bringing bacteria counts to within acceptable levels. The association said that Cambodian mango growers would be better off focusing their efforts on securing export contracts for China and upping shipments to the Thai and Vietnamese markets. Environment Minister Say Samal joined the International Solar Alliance, which promotes solar power in the world's sunniest countries. 
Bringing together developing nations located along the equator, the Alliance will work to attract investment to the solar industry and support research and development across borders. The idea was first announced at the Paris Climate Conference last year and launched this week when Cambodia and about 20 other countries signed the framework agreement. Visitors who attended the three-day water festival in Phnom Penh spent approximately $30 million according to the Ministry of Tourism estimate. The estimated 3 million visitors each spent on average $10, primarily for accommodation during the November 13 to 15 event. About 12,000 international tourists visited the festival. In entertainment news, Jimmy Fallon has taped Jimmy Fallon has tapped nearly every one of his musical, musically inclined guests for his hilarious Tonight Show segment, but his latest partnership with Metallica may have just taken the cake. The talk show host and The Roots joined forces with heavy metal rock band Metallica on Wednesday evening to perform a rendition of the band's jam Inter Sandman with, you guessed it, classroom instruments. Even with toy tambourines, kazoos, and xylophones, that iconic intro is unmistakable and actually sounds pretty good given the circumstances. Frontman James Hetfield didn't let the instrument switch up phase him, rocking out harder than ever to, on his colorful clarinet next to drummer Lars Ulrich and his miniature bongo. The Black Eyed Peas star, known as Taboo, has recently revealed his secret battle with testicular cancer for the first time. The 41-year-old star, whose real name is Jamie Louise Gomez, shared his experiences after being diagnosed with stage 2 cancer in 2014. The musician has now been cancer-free for two years and wanted to share his story and inspire others like those who had inspired him. Quote, there are millions going through things like this, and I want to remind them that we don't curl up into a ball when we have a trial or tribulation. We get up and fight. The 41-year-old and his wife welcomed a daughter eight months ago after being told it might not be possible. It has been five years since the Black Eyed Peas went their separate ways. However, Taboo released his new song, Fight, to help people face their own challenges as he partners with the American Cancer Society's new campaign called The Fight. There's a new trailer out for Netflix's A Series of Unfortunate Events, Adaptation, and unlike the brief hints of earlier trailers, we're finally getting a good look at what to expect from the series when it debuts on the streaming service next year. The trailer shows off the series' distinct style, a dark and quirky blend that brings to mind earlier works like Pushing Daisies or basically anything directed by Tim Burton. Neil Patrick Harris's take on the villainous Olaf is on full display, and Harris seems to relish the over-the-top performance peppered with absurd disguises and various goofs in Olaf's quest to steal the Baladare fortune. The dark humor and wordplay that the novels are known for also seems to have made it to the screen intact, along with the narration from Lemony Snicket, the alleged author of the books. This has been the Radio 1 News Update. Stay tuned for more news on Radio 1 FM 103.7.